وعلى علي الكفل الحسين أولاد الحسين وعلى حافل الحسين السلام یا مصباح الهدا مظلوم کربلا السلام علام یا مصباح الهدا مظلوم کربلا السلام It is true that traveling is a great way to learn and experience new things. But there are some journeys that not only teach us, but also leave a mark on our spirits. Journeys like Karbala, Najaf, Samara, Kazamin are only some of those journeys. It is possible to film some of those journeys, but there are some that cannot be filmed. <laughs> We have landed at Baghdad airport after a long flight from London. We are still tired and exhausted, but there's still a feeling of excitement and joy as we get closer and closer to our masters. We now board the bus to Najaf al-Ashraf, the city of Amir al-Mu'mineen, and begin the next stage of our spiritual journey. <laughs> Whilst on our way to Najaf al-Ashraf, we came across several mawkibs and the hosts of these mawkibs standing outside inviting us in, not only inviting us but pleading with us to join them for dinner. Now I don't know what the word for this behaviour is but generosity doesn't quite seem to cut it. Where else on the planet does one find such selflessness? After crossing dozens of checkpoints and covering approximately 170 kilometers, we have finally arrived in the city of Amir al muminin The hearts are now racing, and from being tired, all of a sudden we are now filled with a new source of energy. We have arrived at the gates to the shrine of Amir al muminin and are slowly making our way inside to the Hara. We could not believe where we were standing. These feelings cannot be explained. The master of this universe was right in front of us and we were slowly walking towards his shrine. It was as if we were walking in the skies and we could not feel the ground underneath us. 
we could feel a presence of a king, of someone who is in truly a master. In this documentary, I will take you all on a journey with me to some of these cities. It is impossible to film the exact feelings, but I will try to convey at least a small part of that great experience. On our second day, we pay a visit to the world's largest cemetery known as Wadi al Salam. This graveyard is situated adjacent to the shrine of Amir al Mu'mineen. This graveyard also holds the shrines of Nabi Hud and Nabi Saleh. It also holds the graves of notable religious figures such as Allama Sayyid Qadi Tabatabai, which is also located nearby. On the following day, we paid a visit to another important landmark known as Masjid al Kufa, a spiritual hotspot for pilgrims to come and to connect with their Creator. This masjid holds a lot of significance for the Mu'mineen. 
It is known as the Mihrab of Imam Ali salam, where Imam used to come and offer his daily prayers and also lead his political movement from this very masjid. This mosque also holds the graves of Muslim Ibn Aqil, the cousin and also the ambassador to Imam Hussein in Kufa. It also holds the grave of Amir Muqtar al thaqafi the avenger of Imam Hussein's massacre. Furthermore, it also holds the grave of Hani ibn Urwa, the companion of Imam Hussein, who was killed by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad la'natullahi alayhi for sheltering and supporting Muslim ibn Aqil. This is also the place where Nabi Nuh's ark made its end after the storm. <laughs> Just a few meters adjacent to Masjid al Kufa is the house of Imam Ali. This is the place where the Imam stayed during his time in Kufa. Another known personality, which is also buried in Kufa, is Mesa Mittamar. Mesa Mittamar was a devout and loyal companion of Imam Ali salam. Although there isn't a lot of detailed information about his life, he is known for being a date seller in Kufa, who had many outstanding qualities. Imam Ali salam had promised Mesa a high level in paradise beside himself for his resistance against the governor of Kufa. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, may Allah's curse be upon him. The Imam had also informed Maytham of his martyrdom, the name of his killer, and the story of his execution on a palm tree. <laughs> Another mosque that we paid a visit to was Masjid al Sahla. This mosque has a lot of significance for the believers. Masjid al Sahla is the sacred place where the last Imam, Imam Mahdi salam, will soon be appearing together with his family. It is stated that the Imam arrives to say his Salah in this Masjid every Tuesday night. Historically, this is the place where the houses of Prophet Ibrahim and Dawood were situated. Prophet Khizr also lived here for some time and the Prophet Idris used to work here. <laughs> Ya Hussein, 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 Ya
The day has arrived. The day we begin our journey towards Karbala, leaving the holy city of Najaf, where our master Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is buried. We begin the three-day journey on foot. That is guaranteed. Change our life. After paying our final salams at the shrine of Imam Ali alayhi salam, we head towards pole number one, which is approximately ten kilometers away from the holy shrine. The journey is around 80 to 90 kilometers long and it will take around two to three days to complete. At first, particularly as a Westerner, you feel disorientated by the thought of walking for days on end through a desert in a war-torn Iraq. But this feeling of anxiety quickly fades away at the sight of the million strong crowd, if not more, of fellow walkers. On your journey towards Karbala, you will find out for yourself why this city is so intoxicating. What you will witness is that even the widest angle camera lens is too narrow to capture the spirit of the people on this journey. It isn't easy for an outsider to understand what inspires these pilgrims. You see women carrying children in their arms, old men in wheelchairs, people on crutches, and blind seniors holding walking sticks. This journey seems long and difficult, but when you see someone walking with their walking sticks, the courage comes itself. An avalanche of women, men and children fill the eye from one end of the horizon to the other. The crowds are so huge that they cause a blockade for hundreds of miles. You will witness a different type of passion in every single individual on this walk. Let's put aside the elderly, the men and the women, 
and let's take a look at the children. You will see in the eyes of these children a different type of passion and desire to reach their master, Imam Hussein. They thought they could bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. These seeds are the prayers of Fatima to Zahra. Salamullahi alayha. Just looking at the multitudes leaves you breathless. What adds to the spectacle is that as the security conditions worsen, even more people are motivated to challenge the terrorist threats and march in defiance. Thus, this walk isn't merely a religious exercise, but is a bold statement of resistance. One part of the pilgrimage which will leave every visitor perplexed is the sight of thousands of mokibs with makeshift kitchens set up by the local villagers who live around the pilgrim's path. These mokibs are places where pilgrims get practically everything they need from fresh meals to eat and a space to rest. After covering 450 poles, a day full of wonders has come to an end. We started our day two with Fajr prayers and then continued the journey towards Karbala. Our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al Sadiq narrates a very notable tradition about the Zahir of Imam Hussain. He says, When the Zahir leaves his house, be it on foot or on a mount, Allah sends down 4,000 angels who send salutations upon him until he reaches the grave. Of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Sumatum, Kiribala, 
A question is often asked, how much money should you take with you on this journey? The answer is none. The currency on this walk is servitude and kindness. Every single volunteer you encounter will be more grateful to the visitor than vice versa, for it is the biggest honour to aid and attend to the guests that make this journey. Once you realise this, your heart will melt and you will appreciate the godly values of peace and harmony Hussein's legacy has left. More intriguing is how pilgrims are invited for food and drink. A market we had the opportunity to visit was set up by a group from India. They intercepted our path, pleading with us to accept their offerings, which often includes a full suite of services fit for kings. First, you can have a foot massage, then you are offered a delicious hot meal, then you are invited to rest while your clothes are washed, ironed, then returned to you after a nap. All complimentary of course. Arbaeen is no doubt a revolution. It is a revolution to demonstrate to the world that Islam is a religion of peace, love and care for others. It is an occasion where one can witness doctors and physicians serving for free. We had the opportunity to visit a medical camp set up by doctors from Pakistan. We were providing free medical care to the pilgrims on the walk and even offering massage to the Mu'mini. <laughs> on this walk, there is no one who asks you about your religion or your sect or which country you come from. Every pilgrim is honourable and treated like royalty. If someone wants to witness the unity of the Muslim Ummah and wants to know about the teachings of the Holy Prophet وسلم, being followed, he can truly witness this on this walk. It is an event where you will witness scholars sitting on the floor, polishing the shoes of the pilgrims. It is an event where women are walking with pride and dignity despite of being exhausted and children are enthusiastic in taking long strides with smiles on their faces. One can witness hope, love, kindness, truth and sacrifice. One war-ridden and wounded nation is embracing the whole world in the name of one who is slaughtered in the deserts of Karbala after being kept thirsty and hungry for three days. There are lessons to learn from this spiritual war. It is an event in which people participate regardless of their sect, profession and social status. There is no one who asks about religion or sect. Every pilgrim is honourable. <laughs> I'm gonna
سلمان کو میسم کو غم اس کا رلاتا ہے ایک ایسی یتیمہ ہے جو شام میں تنہا ہے تسکین دل سرور شہزادی کا نوحہ ہے شہزادی کا نوحہ ہے شہزادی کا نوحہ ہے غم سکینہ سنانا غم سکینہ سنانا As the sun rose on day three, so did our spirits, as we were getting closer and closer to Karbala. So from pole 1086, we continued our journey. زائرین کا یہ طاقت حسین ہے دل سے آ رہی ہے یہ صدا ایک ہی لگن ہے کربلا ہر قدم پہ بڑھ رہا ہے دل کا حوصلہ As soon as you see the signs of Karbala, your heart starts to race. The vibe in the air starts to change and a new source of energy is installed within you. Due to this energy, your pace of walking starts to increase and you are getting impatient to see your master. Throughout the entire route, shouts of Ya Zair, Ya Zair echoes in the air. Everywhere, the servants of the Zair of Hussein are seen asking the Zair, O oh Zair, take something from us. O oh Zair, take something from us. Give us a chance to eat something, drink something, rest for some time at our place. You are the lovers of the Prophet and his progeny. You are going for the ziyara of the grandchild of the Prophet. If you are happy with us, even in the smallest manner, it would be the greatest achievement for our life. So much respect. 
so much respect and honor for what? Only because he is a Zaid of that oppressed Imam who was martyred in the deserts of Karbala. This respect is actually the blessing of the grandson of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Arbaeen should be listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for several categories. One of them being the longest continuous dining table and the largest number of people fed for free. On our way, we came across the biggest market on the walk, set up by a group from Kuwait. Upon asking, we were told that the owner of the market donated over two million pounds for the sole purpose of feeding the pilgrims of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Where else can we find this sort of generosity?
after a three day walk, a journey filled with life changing experiences, we have finally reached the city of Karbala. From the experience so far, we can say without a doubt that Hussein is a man that warms every heart and inspires people to new heights of compassion. After approximately a hundred kilometers, three days, tired legs, and a heart bursting with emotions, our eyes fell on the golden dome of Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. Joy, sadness, humility, and honor all turned into a stream of tears, for paradise on earth has been reached. Imam Muhammad al-Baqir says, Visit Karbala once in your lifetime, so that when you die, you do not feel like a stranger in heaven. We had finally arrived at the doorstep of the heavens. We entered the shrine of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. At this very moment, we forgot everything and everyone in this world. And the only thing that was going through our mind was to pay a sight at the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Every heart was torn with his grief and every eye was moist. After paying a visit to the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, we cross Bainul Haramain, the path between the two shrines and enter the shrine of Abu al Abbas, the brother of Imam Hussein, the son of Bibi Fatima Salamullahi Alayha. Whilst entering the shrine, there is nothing going through our mind apart from one thing, and that is, O oh Master, the loyalty you showed to the Imam of your time, please instill this loyalty within us to the Imam of our time. Oh, 
जब से करबला तक गए आए सच्चा दिखे सफर को कैसे कोई भुलाए कैसे कोई भुलाए वो शाम और वो गुफा पहुंचू मैं कर वो बना जैनब की बेरदाई सज्जाद का वो नोहा दरबार का भी पुरसा जिंदान का भी पुरसा जिंदान का भी पुरसा रोती है कब्र जहरा रोती है कब्र जहरा पहुंचू मैं कर वो बना शुका हुआ है बदला है जिसको लेना फर्जंद आपका है फर्जंद आपका गए वो अब जहूरे मौला पहुंचू मैं कर वो बना द कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ इमाम हुसैन अलैहिस्सलाम एंड अबुल फजल अब्बास अलैहिस्सलाम इंकरेजेस inspires and champions change for the better and no amount of media blackout can extinguish its light puri ho dil ki dua puri ho dil ki dua pahunchu main kar bo bala pahunchu main kar bo bala ya badla kar bala me Oh, oh, oh. 
On our final day, we paid a visit to the shrine of Imam Hadi السلام, and Imam Askari السلام, in Samarra. The shrine is a simple and very spiritual place emanating love and humanity amid a sea of hatred and chaos. When the Abbasi Khalifa forced our seventh Imam to consume poison after torturing him in various prisons for over 14 years and martyring him, they wouldn't have imagined that Imam al Qadim would one day rule the city of Baghdad. Today, the shrine of Musa al Qadim and Imam Jawad defines the city of Baghdad.
کہاب نہ ہو فغا Who is Hussain? For the hundreds and millions of his followers, this question can only be answered when you begin the walk of allegiance. Karbala